Major League Baseball cannot stop embarrassing themselves. Now the head of the PA is blaming rule changes for pitchers' injuries, even though there is no evidence to support his claim. The Masters are underway this weekend, and history tells us that Tiger Woods is about to win one more major. Women's basketball saw a huge spike in ratings, but is this simply just the Caitlin Clark effect? That and more coming up on Sports Talk with Dad right now. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Sports Talk with Dad. As always, my name is Kyle, and I cannot call this Sports Talk with Dad without the man sitting next to me, a man who called golf hitting rocks into gopher holes, my dad, Tim. You never called it that, ever. You didn't have golf courses, and so you had rocks, you had sticks, and you had gopher holes. You know, I wasn't there when St. Andrews was formed. Right, because you were there had equipment. before. Stop it. <laughs> you were there when they would drink wine instead of water because the water was not clean. I never lived in Paris or in Germany where they did that. Or in the Middle East or wherever. everywhere else in the world. So can we get back to sports? Yeah, I think I'm out of old jokes. Good. Right Thank you. So it's the start of baseball season. And what do I do every baseball season? So old you were there for the invention of baseball. Okay, I'm done. Uh, what do you do before every baseball season? I watch Major League. Oh, yeah. Dude, I just watched that last night, too. Did I didn't you know you were watching it. I watched it. Such I was a great a, movie. I got an uncut version of it, too, which, which is even better. Yeah. Filmed mainly in Milwaukee at Old it County was. Stadium. Yep. It just was such a fun movie to watch. And if there was a chance, they were calling for extras. And thousands upon thousands of people showed up. Yeah, that you thing didn't was go. I did not go. You but failed. I lived just far enough away As that I wasn't going to drive. As the Arrow said, you have failed this city. I've been really obsessed with watching the Arrow lately. Yeah. Okay, they filmed at like 1 or 2 in the morning. Yeah. No guarantee of what, if you'd be on camera. Doesn't matter. I wasn't going to go. That's dumb. And neither was your mom. That's dumb. No, it wasn't really? dumb. Let I had to work. You, let me ask you this. With work involved... Do you remember work the rest or the next day, or would you have remembered for the rest of your life being at the filming of Major League? I hate you. Yeah. Anyways. You made the wrong decision. Did, did you know Serrano, when he actually hit that home run when he was carrying the bat? Yeah. He actually hit that home run. Did he really? Yeah. I didn't know that. It was a trivia thing that popped up. I know it was a fastball. It was a fastball. Not a curveball. And Charlie Sheen actually could throw mid-80s. He did. Well, he threw like 100 pitches a day. They actually had him on five days rest. Because of how many pitches he was throwing. He, is, he wanted to be a baseball player. He is baseball obsessed, which I love about Charlie Sheen. I have a question for you. Yeah. And then we'll get into sports. But this is related to sports. So the Cleveland Indians or Guardians or whatever they're being called now. Should they retire 99, which was Rick Vaughn's number? Absolutely, they should. Really? Yes. Yes. Has there been another time in sports that a fictional character has had a number retired? No, but there is a fictional character in a Hall of Fame. Rocky is in the okay, boxing. Rocky's hall of fame. not in the boxing hall of fame. Sylvester Stallone's in the boxing hall of fame as a contributor because of Rocky. Well, yeah, but you can't say Rocky. Rocky, the fictional person, would is in Stallone the hall of be fame. in there without Rocky? Sylvester Stallone is in the boxing hall of fame as a Who contributor. Played Rocky. Yeah, but Rocky Balboa Rocky is, in there. is not in the hall of fame. Stop Sylvester it. Stallone, the real person. I don't know if you know this, but Rocky didn't actually happen. Are you, are you aware are, of this? Do you know there are millions of people who don't believe that? Well, millions of people are dumb. Yeah, they are. It's the... Gr arguably, I'm going to say the greatest sports movie of all time. The first one. I don't think there's arguably. Well, I mean, you have Hoosiers in there. You have... I don't think Major League's considered the best sports. People would argue the natural. I wouldn't. I'm I not wouldn't, a big fan It wasn't a movie. fan. But there's a lot of them. I would say For the Love of the Game is up there. It's a very underrated sports movie. Uh, Remember the Titans is up there. But I would say argue, or Rocky, I should say, is is the best of them all. There's also Maybe Hoosiers, though. Raging Bull is up there. I watched that the other day. Yeah, but it, would you take Raging Bull no, over Rocky? Absolutely oh, not. It's not part of the and, conversation. And if I'm rating them, Rocky 1, yeah. Rocky Balboa, Rocky 2. And then the rest out. And Rocky Five doesn't oh, exist. I thought you were about to rank sports movies. No, no, I'm about, just the <laughs> Rocky, the you. Rocky movies. I was like, and you actually, really rank all these Rocky movies ahead of every other movie? No, no, no. And actually, Creed was the first Creed was outstanding. I did not like the first Creed. I did turned you? it off. I did. I did. Second one was it was too slow. 
second, well, they were having to develop the character. I need a character. Rocky Balboa was great, though. Rocky, Rocky Balboa, Balboa has one of the best speeches of all time. I wouldn't say the movie as a whole was. Oh, I loved every minute. I loved every minute of it. And the speech it was, too, was, it was unrealistic. It was very unrealistic. Really? What, With Mike Tyson about to fight at the same age Rocky was in that movie? That is a very different situation. It's an exhibition I'm, I'm, fight. I'm, You're losing this argument. I'm hoping Mike Tyson knocks him out. I, have, I, I saw too. an interview with him, and he's getting hungry. He's speaking of the eye of the tiger. I'm very excited. But Rocky Balboa is very realistic. It's, it's a true life story of everybody, right? You're down on your luck. You're just looking for that one shot, and you get it. And you have to set your expectations correctly of, I just want to go 15. Right. Well, and that's how many times Rocky... do we say that in life? You know, I, I don't need everything in the world. I don't need to be a world champ at anything. I just want to go all 15 rounds. And Rocky, that's all he wanted on that first it. fight. And, and that's a win. It. And, you know, they actually recorded part of that movie with the ending of him winning. But they changed it. No, they did not record it with him they ending. Did. No, they did they not. They were going to. That's not the story. They recorded the ending. So you know on the poster how it's Rocky yeah. and Adrian walking away? And it's them well, together wasn't walking Wasn't he supposed out. to die? At no, he was supposed to die at the end of Rocky V. Okay. Um, but he didn't own the rights, so he couldn't make that decision. No, at the end of Rocky, the original ending was those two meeting outside. And he just went outside and met Adrian. And they just walked away together holding hands. And they filmed it that way, which is why the poster shows them walking away holding hands. But then all of a sudden, Stallone watched it. He's like, this is not a good ending. No. And they went back and filmed, I thought they filmed a it, great ending. I thought they filmed it where he won. No, there was never a chance okay. it was going to win. But you let us know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not. But maybe I'm wrong. So you let us know in the comments below and while you're down there, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as we And by the way, it. Stallone is still slightly bitter at the Irwins. As he should be. Or the Winklers, Irwin Winkler. He, he should be. <laughs> because he's wanted to buy the rights to that movie back so many times. And there's no reason for that guy to still hold on to those rights. That, it, that is Sylvester Stallone's legacy, and it's, he's just being cruel. He is. But business is business. Speaking of business being business, let's talk about a business decision being made in Major League Baseball. That it's blown up in their face 20 different ways so far. Let me ask you this. So we, are, of course, are talking about the uniform debacle that is happening right now in Major League Baseball with a two new twists since the last time we talked about this. One, check out this picture right here. As you can see, this doesn't wick away sweat. No. At all. Who thought it would? I don't know. Um, when, I don't know. Even moisture wicking clothing. You're sweating too much. You're going to sweat through it. It These may dry thin. faster. Yes. These are too thin. You cannot allow professional baseball players to go out looking like that. And then you have that going on. And then you have what happened to the Milwaukee Brewers. <laughs> the City Connect uniforms. They were supposed to wear those this past weekend. And this is not just the Brewers. This has happened to three other teams at this point as well. But the City Connect uniforms were supposed to be there this weekend because the, they were supposed to wear them. And they didn't show up in time. It's because they're selling them on Fanatics. Well, that is the crazy. So I was just going to say, they have these for sale with five-day delivery on the Fanatics website right now. Baseball has to step in, say, we screwed up. We're getting them real uniforms back. We'll go back to the old vendor because this doesn't work. Well, Nike was the vendor before, but they just made the uniforms. Nike subsidized the making of the uniforms this year to Fanatics, who is subcontracted not it. subcontracted it. Thank you. I said the wrong word. They subcontracted it to Fanatics, who clearly, and has never been, they always make replicas. Right. And they make these cheap uniforms that are supposed to be for kids. I mean, I've said this a thousand times. These are like the $20 uniforms you used to buy your kid. Or the ones that you would buy to wear to a game if right. you want to be that guy. Right. I think I bought a Seattle Pilots from them, jersey from them at one point. Sure, but even that was better quality than these. That was, it these was all screen sketch. printed. Right. This is absolutely ridiculous. The fact that uniforms are not arriving on time that are for sale. Now, maybe they're last year's uniforms. That I don't know. But the fact of the matter is you are selling these City Connect uniforms and having short delivery turnarounds, and you're not getting into a baseball stadium when you have had six months 
to get these ready. And this is only going to get worse. Can you imagine on a day when it rains or when it gets really hot, these guys are going to sweat through these before the first inning. We're seeing it already. It's awful. We are seeing this already. And we're in the spring when it's cool. Well, can, can you imagine? Let me ask you this. In football, if this was happening, would, would they still have this vendor? Or would they no, have fired them all? They would have went back to the old uniforms and done whatever. Basketball, if this was happening, would this be allowed by Adam Silver? Of course Silver? not. This is only baseball. In, in any major soccer league, would this be allowed to happen? In college sports, would this be allowed to happen? You're answering your own question no. with your question. This is baseball again. This is absolutely ridiculous. I, I remember when baseball teams used to provide their own uniforms. You got to pick your own vendors. Sure. It wasn't a thing. It's only been recently in football and baseball. I think NBA has been doing it for a while, but in football and baseball, it's only recent that the league decided to go with the uniforms. If I'm a team ownership right now, I'm saying, listen, I'm just buying my own uniforms. They've got to. I mean, look at what the Packers did back in the day when everybody was switching uniforms, I think to Nike. Yeah. And they were coming up with these new, new uniform designs. And the Packers just said, no, no, we are not doing this. We're sticking with, we'll wear the logo. But we're sticking with the old I uniforms. am getting nervous with the Packers, kind of off topic here, because they are talking about a new uniform spin with Nike this Four year. Four of them. A home, away, an alternate, and a throwback. I'm excited for alternate. I've been saying that for a while. We need actual alternate uniforms. I, There's no reason not to, but you, you don't change the home uniforms. You do not change the home or the away uniforms. No, those are classic. Don't. You keep them. You do it for a one game just Same. to show something different. St. Vince will come down <laughs> if you change his uniform. Yeah, 100%. For those of you who don't know, the uniforms of Packers were date back to 1960 when Vince Lombardi was the head coach right. and designed them. I think the athletic director actually designed the G for the helmet. I think so. But you don't mess they with They stole us. it from Georgia, but... Then why is Georgia paying the Packers every year? It's the Packers trade. There you go. Was... Did, did Vince change them to green? He did. They were blue before them. Well, they were green sometimes. They were green in the 50s. I was going to say, I think they switched in the 50s in before the 50s. Vince got there. But Vince gave them the classic look that yes. they've had for now very, five, very long five or time. six decades. Another thing in baseball going on right now, and this is where it drives me nuts, because we've talked about this before a couple of times on this You're going to get me angry with this one. The Major League Baseball, I'm going to quote this, because I want to make sure I am saying this right here. Maybe I'm not going to quote this. There we go. The Major League Baseball Association head came out, Tony Clark, and said, since the pitch clock, our concerns about the health impacts of reduced recovery time have only intensified. The league's unwillingness thus far to acknowledge or study the effects of these profound changes is an unpre pre unprecedented threat to our game and its most valuable asset, the players. Now, obviously, this is speaking about the pitch clock, and they're saying he's saying they have less recovery time during a baseball game. First rule about being an athlete, you want to go at a nice clip because if you do, you stay warmer, your muscles stay in, go in the right direction. When I played tennis, I served and volleyed, and I wanted to serve right away. Right. You're warm. I joke a bit. When I was catching, I hated slow pitchers. Well, and if this was true with less recovery time between pitches baseball history then why is it if there's a rain delay you pull the starting pitcher correct because he's been sitting for too long correct so if there's truth to that and major league baseball came out with a statement that says this statement ignores the empirical evidence and much more significant long-term trend over multiple decades of velocity and spin increases that are highly correlated with arm injuries which brings us me to my second point you want to fix the pitcher's injuries? Teach them to pitch. Stop right. having them just try to throw 100 miles an hour well, and go back to the Greg Maddox formula where these guys actually have to spot their pitches and fool the batter. And guess what? Your arms are going to hold up. Right. Much. Well, and this is where you're starting to see the difference. This is the one time I actually agree with the statement Major League Baseball yeah. said because it's true. And Major League Baseball can fix it by making the pitchers go longer. But right now, you're hearing it across several little league college minor league baseball if you don't hit 97 you're not making the majors so what kids are doing is they're throwing harder and harder to try and get to this magical number of 97 95 97 miles per hour versus actually learning how to pitch you've said it for years mm -hmm. i've echoed your 
brilliant statement. You don't hear that from me very often. Of we have throwers, not pitchers. Correct. Greg Maddox, one of the greatest pitchers of all time, would not make it to the big leagues today. Which, how crazy is that? A man who could pinpoint his pitchers, pitches to the point that umpires just gave him the benefit of the doubt most of the time. He could spot them, and his fastball was never more than 88 miles an hour. When he first came in, he was hitting 91, Maybe, 92. Okay. Make me a liar for three miles an hour. He never was that huge power pitcher. No. He was always a guy who mixed it up. He came back to the Cubs, which is when I watched him most, right? Because that's when I was really a big baseball fan. It was constantly 88, 89, maybe 90. But that was pitchers most of the time in baseball. Like, this wasn't a thing. This hitting 95. I remember growing up and seeing pitchers hit 95 miles per hour on the gun and think, wow, that guy's throwing really hard today. It just didn't happen. The yeah. hardest thrower in baseball when I was a kid was Kerry Wood. And Kerry Wood was 95, 96. And he had a terrible motion, and that's what cost him his career. Well, because he liked so, throwing the ball hard. He did, but he also didn't throw it. Roger Clemens and Nolan Ryan right. reached out to him to try to help him with his mechanics. Don't speak bad about Kerry Wood. I'm not. We'll talk about him next month. His anniversary is coming up. I know. But it's the anniversary of me becoming a baseball fan. It is. Nolan Ryan, who is a freak of nature, he yeah. can probably still throw 85 miles an hour. Probably. Had perfect mechanics. Maybe 100 fastballs I could hit it. You can hit it off an 80-year-old man. Well done, my son. Hey, that's a win for me. Would be for me, too. <laughs> Anyways, Nolan Ryan threw it in, in the mid-90s. Could yeah. he get up over 100? Sure. But the could. thing is, you your goal was to go nine. He also had one of the best curveballs in the history of the game. Now, he's not one of the greatest pitchers of all time. He's not in my top 10, maybe top 15. Okay. He's not. He was a strikeout pitcher, but his win loss wasn't that great because when he was, he was very capable of having a bad game. Seven no hitters. Seven no hitters. When he was on, you aren't touching him. Right. But he had great mechanics and he threw great off speed pitches. Yeah. His fastball sometimes would come and it was a very heavy ball. For those who don't know what that is, that ball kind of exploded when it got to the glove. Right. But he could also take something off the fastball. So it wasn't just one pitch. It was two or three, depending on how he threw it. Same with Roger Clemens. Same well, with You had to set up pitches. because you were also going nine. You were going to face that order for a third time. And that's when baseball got exciting. Because mm -hmm. now you're seeing the pitchers and the batters going at it a third time. Pitchers were always the stars of baseball. And baseball in 98 decided that's not the case anymore. And again, Bud Selig ruining my favorite sport. He did. I'm sorry. Like, you can be upset with that all you want. I'm leave Bud alone. If, Rob, about... if Rob Manfred never became commissioner, Bud Steely goes down as the worst commissioner baseball Yeah, but had. fortunately we've had Rob, so leave yeah. Bud alone. He got baseball back in Milwaukee. And... Great. He should have stayed okay. in an owner's Jeez. box. Going back to this here. Thank you. You have the Craig Councils of the game that only give these guys one pitch or one inning, and so you just need to throw as hard as you can to get them out as quickly as possible but there's no artistry to the game anymore. I talk about Greg Maddox a lot, but Greg Maddox is the prime example of this. Well, or whole... look at Rich Hill today. Rich Hill has a 12-6 curveball that drops that goes maybe 60 miles per hour, but throwing that pitch and then coming back with an 88, 90 mile per hour fastball makes it look like it's coming at 120 well, miles per hour. Exactly. And if you look at that Braves pitching staff back in the day, you had Maddox. You had Tom Glavin, right. you had Schmoltz, right. who was probably the biggest power hitter, pitcher of them all. Correct. But he also had two other pitches. Right. When I grew up, to be a pitcher in the major league, you better have at least four pitches. At minimum, yes. four pitches. And you could adjust off of that. Correct. You're, right you're going to change the speed, you're going to change the angle, you're going to change a bunch of different things with those pitches. You had to be an artist with a baseball. And now, that's why guys are throwing their, arm, their arms out. It has nothing to do with the pitch clock. No. It, it, well, it starts from when they're kids. It really does. I, I, I work with somebody whose son is, is a pitcher, and it's amazing hearing them talk about, or hear him talk about how they're teaching him how to pitch. And it's just like, dude, this kid is 12. He's, he's 115 pounds, and they're having him just power this ball as hard as he can every single pitch. And it's like you're not learning how to pitch. You're here. just ruining you're just your ruining arm. You're ruining your arm. And you wonder why these kids end up getting hurt once they get to the majors or don't even make it to the majors 
and have Tommy John all the time because you aren't you have not learned how to pitch a baseball. All you've learned is how to throw as hard as you can, and that motion is going to destroy you. What when I had a, when I was coaching baseball, I had a rule: if you were under 15 years of age, you were throwing a fastball and a slider because it was the same motion. Right. Well, just, a slider just snapped the wrist more. It's even funny now, speaking to that same guy I was talking to, they're teaching him how to throw a curveball because they say sliders are what hurt the arms. And he showed me how he was teaching him how to throw the, the curveball, and it's a slider. Yeah, he's just coming down like, straight down right. through. It's like, oh, that's not curveball. No, a curveball, the 12-6 curveball, you're actually rotating you're underneath. Your arm, yeah. Yes. Watch Rich Hill, if you're curious. It's pretty impressive. Or go back and watch Nolan Ryan. Or Nolan Ryan. Or oh. Greg Maddox. Or any of the guys who actually pitched. Best story I've ever heard about a guy who never threw a fastball or very rarely did was Phil Necro. Yeah. Coming up on his 300th win, he was bound and determined he was not going to win that game with a knuckleball. He wasn't going to fool people. He threw nothing but fastballs until the last out when he finally threw a knuckleball because that's what got him there. Right. But his fastball was mid 80s. Yeah. You know, it was not anything ex exciting. You don't have to throw 100 miles an hour. As a matter of fact, if your ball is going in flat at 100 plus miles an hour, guess what's going to happen? It's going to come back at you at 110, 120. Well, look what's happening with Chapman right now. He came into the league being able to throw 106 miles per hour, and now he's lost some velocity. And we talked about this when he was pitching for the Cubs in 2016. It's like, man, that ball is flat. Yes. It is just a rope. And if you can get around on it, it's, it's gone. And we're starting to see that with him now. And those major league hitters make no mistake that the speed doesn't worry them it's just right. the movement of the ball that will will fool them occasionally when we talk about mariano rivera as one of the best pitchers of all time which i don't agree with because he was a closer but a one inning closer his pitch moved yes that's and, what made it so special and he had that split finger fastball or whatever you call it but it the fork. fork ball cutter i guess they call whatever it. they called it but they called it a but cutter. he had those two pitches and they his Fork ball was his out pitch right. because you just it dropped off the table. It was amazing. Yeah, but he only threw it for one inning. Right. I always lean to, and this is generational. I get this. I'm the old guy, but I go back to the goose sausages, the roll, rally fingers, who had to come in in the sixth or seventh inning, and actually see these guys at least twice to save their games. Right. You and I just agreed on one thing. You are the old guy. Proud to be because I saw some of the best pitchers of all time. And I don't mind there being one inning pitchers. It doesn't bother me at all. But again, it used to be the pitcher had to go seven. You brought in your eighth inning guy, and then you brought in your ninth inning guy. And that's how it worked. And if the pitcher was really on, then you let him go nine. But the goal was always go nine innings. And now it's like, okay, if you go three, that's enough. This it's a joke. You have to bring the stars of baseball back. You have to make pitchers stretch it out. And, and by doing that, if you want these arm injuries to stop happening, then you need to start from when the kids are younger and bring back the pitcher. Because if, you, if your goal is to go nine, your idea is I have to go seven to nine innings, well, you're going to save some stuff for later on. You have to make sure your arm's ready to go in those later innings. And so you have to learn how to really paint that plate and, and make sure you're doing other things with the baseball than just throwing as hard as you can. Warren Spahn, famous Milwaukee Brave, 363 wins, the most wins by any left-hander in history. Yeah. Told a story about how when he was a kid, they would get up 7, 8 in the morning, play and throw until 8, 9 at night when their mother would call them in. Right. That's how you build up their arm. He wasn't throwing hard all day, but he was throwing all day, and the muscles get stronger, and then he would run it out, after the, the next day, after he was done pitching, put ice on it, and he was ready to go for the next game. You did not hear about these injuries back in the day as much. You didn't. And again, it's because the idea wasn't to throw the ball as hard as you could. The idea was, I need to put this in places where the, the batter's going to be forced to guess. Right. It was more of a game of trickery than it was of, I'm just going to throw this as hard as I can and see if the guy can get around on the ball. You said it best. They were artists. And they, they had really were. It was called painting the plate for a reason. Right. And it just doesn't exist anymore. Can we talk about the world's first canceled player? The world's first canceled player? Everybody talks about cancel culture now. Okay. This may be the very first celebrity that was ever canceled. They don't like the fact that as a 60 plus year old man, you're using the word cancel culture, but go ahead. Seen too many of it. Okay.
And that would be Ty Cobb. Oh, sure. Ty Cobb was arguably the greatest player in the first part of baseball's history. Yeah, the dead ball era. Say what you want. He was the first man ever elected into the Hall of Fame. His I'm batting saying average. What I want. I'm saying the truth. He was had a 366 batting average. The dead ball era. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to establish that it was a different game. Was a different game, but he would have been fine anytime. But I grew up hearing that Ty Cobb was a racist. That sure. Ty Cobb sh- sharpened his spikes. Yeah. That Ty Cobb actually stabbed a guy because he was uppity and killed him. Yeah. Here are the real facts. Okay. Ty Cobb had came from a family of abolitionists. Yep. His great grand, great grandfather was ran out of town because of the way he preached. He was a minister. Okay. His grandfather wouldn't serve in the Southern Army because he was an ab- didn't agree with slavery. His father stopped a lynching. He didn't come from racists. He might okay. have grown up in Georgia, but he was not a racist. He never shot from his spikes. As a matter of fact, if you look back in the history, in 1912, he called on the commissioner or the leaders of the league at that time to actually dull the spike so people wouldn't get hurt. There's a famous picture where it looks like he's going in and, and hitting a catcher in the groin. Right. The catcher came out and said, no, he was going to kick the ball out of my glove. And if I would have been standing where I should have, I would have just tagged him. Cobb didn't play the game that way. All of this happened because of a guy named Al Stump, who Cobb threatened to sue at one point because he was writing lies. Yeah, I did know that. But everybody, and players came to his defense after he's died. And by the way, Stump wrote this book about him after he died. Yeah, he's a coward. Very much a coward. And a sensationalist and a yellow journalist. Cobb came out and actually said that blacks should be in the major league. Yes, he was calling for this in the 20s. I, I did know that. He, he actually spoke to Commissioner Landis several times. And there's the real the back vi- players in, in baseball. And that's the real villain. Right. Didn't and he a, say that they had the right to play baseball? He said, they, that's exactly what he said. They had the, uh, what it, I've got it here. Uh, they had the right to play. And who's, who's going to speak out against them and say they can't play? Right. So guys like Josh Gibson. Satchel Page never got to play a long time. Josh Gibson sadly died when he was 35. He may be the greatest catcher of all time. Probably. Even as much as I love Johnny Bench, Josh Gibson did things that... I've said before that the legend of Babe Ruth would never have grown as large if uh, Josh Gibson was in the major leagues. It would have been a one-two punch. It would I mean, have been. It would have been a great competition, actually. Yes. But <sighs> Cobb would go on his own dime to Negro League games and throw out the first pitch. And then he'd sit in the dugout with the players and just talk baseball with him. Mm-hmm. This man was not a racist. By the way, a great book, and I just finished it. It's called a Terrib- Ty Cobb, A Terrible Beauty. It's by a guy named Charles Learson. Go get the book. I is mean, that it, where this is coming from? Because I am extremely confused why we're going down this rabbit because, hole right now. Well, we're talking baseball, and I've been looking for an excuse to do this for a few weeks. I'm tired of Ty Cobb being... I just watched a video where they, again, Ken Burns called the man a racist. And this, he's not. No. He was. But this what, has been out for a while. Was he an angry man? Yes, he was. He had a short yeah, fuse. Sure. I mean, the guy, a, the guy that they talked about that he stabbed in the bar fight was a white guy. A white guy. Yeah. And he didn't die. He got and, roughed up a bit. I mean, he still stabbed the guy. I mean, <laughs> it's not pretend anyway, that part didn't happen. Sure. I, look, he was a man of his times. People worked out things on their own back during that time a lot more. And you could get away with a lot more. Stabbings. Yeah, well, guy was wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not defending. Don't stab him. I'm not defending it, all of his actions, but I am defending him against the fact that people called him racist and accused him of stabbing a black man when it was actually a, a white guy. It wasn't a raider. It was a security guard, whatever the reason yeah, was. It, was. it was a hit piece. Yes. But why, why are we, I'm still confused by this. Why are Just we going this? Just because I wanted to talk about baseball and I wanted to defend a guy who's been wronged for decades. And now what's out, and now we can talk about the Masters. Okay. Next time you can warn me we're going to do this so I can actually understand what's happening. I sometimes, did not. Sometimes you just have to let your dad go. 
I thought that's what the last word was for, not the middle of the show. Yeah, well. Now I'm confused and nervous yeah. about what your last word's going to be. No, it'll be a good one. Okay. I can go back and do the tie cop. Was... Let's talk masters. Yeah, I, I guess. Did you, see right. the you let us know what you think in the comments below and while you're down there, like, subscribe. And hit that notification bell so you get to enjoy this show as much as you enjoy, as much as we enjoy making it. Man, you've thrown me completely off. Okay. Let me know in the comments below too if your father just randomly brings stuff up and goes off on a tangent as well, because that was confusing. But on to the Masters. It's all about baseball. And I haven't went on a tangent what? for a long time. It's usually you that go off. I am a big tangent person, but now you see where I get it from. He hides it. So the Masters. The Masters. It is golf season. It officially is. I'm excited. Uh, it's going to be warm this weekend. I do want to get out and golf this weekend. You are not greenlit yet. As oh, much I am. As you say you are. I am. You're... I'm probably good only for a par three, but I'd that's... like to try it. But no, I'm. That's fair. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. But I am excited to get out and golf again and be terrible at a sport that I like to play. But yeah, I'm excited. Tiger is playing. He is playing. And Tiger is going to win. No, he's not. Tiger he's... Woods is a. History tells us that Tiger Woods is about to win what, the Masters. Okay, speaking of tangents, what what history are you talking about? I don't know. No, oh, okay. This Ti history. Tiger. History right now, the present history tells us, because we're going to be talking about on Monday, that history just told us Tiger Woods was going to win the Masters. I have no reason to believe this, but I will will it into happening. I will take. You and Jack Nicholson won at 45. How old is Tiger Woods? He was actually 46. Okay. How old is Tiger Woods? 48. Okay. He's got See? the ability. The, History. He, he played a practice they were round. close to the same age. He played a practice round. One of the guys he was with said he's never seen Tiger hit it better. The only thing that could screw him up is what's going to happen on Thursday. I don't think he's going to play on Thursday. I hope not. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the question becomes, is he going to be able to play two rounds on Friday? And be okay. So those of you that live under a rock, Tiger Woods, shouldn't have a leg right now. Yeah. He had a very bad car accident that hurt his leg. I mean, I think it's all metal now. I don't really think there's... It's hurt. For any average human, the leg would have been gone. Yeah. Yeah. They reconstructed his leg because he's Tiger Woods, which we've talked about on this show a couple of times now. Uh, he has back problems from different things. I mean, he's just... He tore his ACL at one point. Right. I mean, he's he's pretty beat up. And so... It has to be warm. From watching you all these years, you don't play when it gets below 50 degrees, and even 50 is questionable for you because you tighten up. Right. The good news is it's not going to be cold, but it is going to be rainy. And it's gonna, that will make... It's going to be windy. It'll, well, I'm not worried about the wind as much as the footing. If it's rainy, it could be slippery. Right. But they do have things... At Augusta, correct? Oh, sure. That suck out that oh, rain yeah. from underneath. They invested a lot of money in that. Augusta is the perfect place for him to play. He knows the course like the back of his hand. But here's the thing. They're talking upwards of 90 mile per hour winds on Thursday and thunderstorms. Well, they won't play. He's off at 130. It's supposed to start in the early morning. I don't think he's playing. I think he's going to have to play two rounds on Friday. And I don't know if they'll get a full two rounds in. They may have to do it half and then half again on Saturday. It's gonna. It would help him not to play on Thursday because the weather is going to be terrible. Correct. And it's going to be nice the rest of the week. It's supposed to be a little windy on Friday. Well, not little. It's 30 mile per hour winds. It's going to be pretty windy. 30 mile hour winds is tough to play in. But, you know, Tiger's done it. He's played at the British Open several just, times every year. You just hood the club. You know, you just got to hit the ball lower like uh, what's his name from Tin Cup did in the Texas winds. Got it. You're comparing the guy from Tin Cup to Tiger Woods. Well, Tiger Woods is better. You think? The Tin Cup's a more fun story. It's a great movie. You can have Rocky. I get Tin Cup. <laughs> okay. There's another great story this weekend. Michael Block, for those of you who watched the PGA last year, he was close to the lead for the first three days. He fell back on Sunday. He finished his entire for, thir for 15th, but he got a special invite to play at the Masters. Awesome. Which is awesome. What do you think he's going to score? Not good. Yeah, not good. Not Listen, good. I've said before, right? I consider myself athletic, right? I would say if you put me in a group of normal people, I am going to be in the upper 50% of athletic ability, right? Okay. So let's say I'm in, and I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying I am, but let's say you even put me in the 1% of normal people in athletic ability. 
there is a big difference between being athletic and being an athlete. Because if you put me against athletes, I, I look like I'm a toddler. Like, <laughs> it's not do. pretty. And, but I've played with other people that, you know, are my age and close to the athletic ability, and I normally do pretty well. So there's a big difference. And I think he, I actually think Michael Block is, from what he did previously sure. and what he's been doing, I think he is in the top echelon of athletic people. He's probably in the 99 and a half percentile at one half of 1% of really, really great golfers. Right. But you're the going up are... against the 0.01%. Yes. No. Or 0.0001%. Right. I mean, these are the best in the world. I want him to beat Brooks Kepka. I want Brooks Kepka to finish last after what he said about Tiger's Woods. Tiger's Woods? Tiger Woods. I, you have thrown... I mean, I can't speak normally on this show, but this is getting to be ridiculous. Uh, I just don't want Brooks Kepka to finish last place. He may win. He might. He I want to see him and Tiger on Sunday. Final nine on Sunday? Final nine on Sunday. Oh my and God. I want to see Tiger Woods win. And then I want to see Tiger Woods pull out of his bag an Xbox controller <laughs> and hand it to Kepka. He's not above doing that either. That would be my favorite sports moment of all time. He may, if he is actually in contention. He's carrying an Xbox controller. He's got one in his bag. I will. Well, you want to talk again about something that's going to fire up Tiger. Sure. That comment will do it. That will warm him up a lot. I just think there, there's one more. I've been saying it for a long time. There is one more in Tiger's bag. And it's going to be the Masters. It's going to have to be the Masters. Yeah. And I think he can do it. I would love to see it. I mean, if Tiger doesn't get have the back problems, and a lot of it, you're, you're a guy that works out a lot. Yeah. People have said that he worked out too much and he put too much strain on his back. I don't he think he lost flexibility. Did. I don't think he did. I think he did a lot of stretching, but the torque he put on a golf club yeah. in his body is more than most people would ever put on. Right. And that just wears you over time. The only reason he probably lasted as long as he did was because he was hitting the gym and strengthened those back muscles. We all have a shelf life. In, in, in our time on this earth. Mine ended several decades ago, <laughs> I think. Fair. Yeah. I still have mine, but at one point, I am going to hit that shelf life, and I'm going to be done. There's just not much I can do anymore. I'll still work out. I'll still do fun things that I can, but I'm not going to be able to push myself the way I do today. It's going to happen. Tiger Woods hit his shelf life. It is what it is. But the fact that he hit that wall and is still able to perform the way that he is. Again, you give him one round, he can beat anybody. It's a matter sure. if he can do it over four days. And with Thursday, the way looking, looking the way it is, it's going to be a question mark. He really needs four days in a row. I hope he gets it. I would love to see it. I mean, it's going to happen. I, I watched the 86 Masters. It was one of the most electric tournaments I've ever watched. Yeah. Um, you I'm, take Tiger or the field? The field. No, Tiger. You never pick the field against Tiger Woods. Of course you do. Now. No. He, he also is promoting his own brand now. He left Nike. He did. And so he's performed, what is it, Sunday Red? Is that what it's called? I think it's called Sunday Red. I don't know. He's got a tiger on it. Yeah. So he's got his own clothes, too. So you want to sell a lot of clothes when the Masters. There's so much on this for Tiger. He's going to win. Okay. This is this is the time. And he's going to hand an Xbox controller to Brooks Kepka after he wins. And I am going to be the happiest person alive. So did you watch the NCAA this weekend? Of course I did. What boring games. They, unfortunately, the two best teams in basketball won. Yeah. The South Carolina women was just a better team. Yeah. And the UConn men, maybe one of the best teams, college teams, to have ever played. I don't know if they would have beaten the Dukes back in the day or whatever, but They're they up dominated. There, I mean, Purdue didn't stand a chance. Zach Eady had a great game. Put up 30 points. The problem is, is that the second highest scorer had 11, and then nobody else had double digits on their team. The third highest scorer, I think, was five. And plus, UConn has, uh, help me with his name. Yeah, the second highest scorer for Purdue was 12, and the third highest scorer for Purdue was five points. Yeah. Plus, you had Donovan Klingen. Yes. Did I say his name right? 
the center for North Carolina, who is 7-2. And actually athletic. Versus Edie at 7-4. Right. I mean, you saw what's going to happen to Edie in the NBA. You saw why he's... I really don't think he's going to be a first-round draft pick. If he is, it'll be late. It'll be an early first-round draft pick. There's, how can you do... No. This isn't like when Sean Bradley was drafted, where he was seven foot whatever, and everybody else, you know, your centers were normally 6'10". Everybody has a seven-foot center at this point. Zach Eady's got to do what Giannis did and really get to work. It's not going to happen. I think it will. Giannis was an athlete coming into I the know. league. And Again, Edie. athletic and athlete. They are very different things. This so, is like... It was, it was, I want to say it was almost like watching Yao Ming, but Yao Ming was an athlete. I mean, he really Yao Ming had a was jump a great shot athlete. and yeah. was a great player in the NBA. It, all I know, I, I compare him to Sean Bradley. And nothing against Sean Bradley. He was in Space Jam. But he was just a tall dude. I would put him... Okay, let me ask you this. Zach Eady, Brooks Lopez. Brooks, come on, dude. I'm asking. Brooks Lopez. Okay. He's got an outside shot. I'm just asking for the inside game. Yeah, Brooks Lopez. Okay. It's not even close. I like, just don't think... I mean, he had a really, really... Well, he had a good game. I mean, his teammates let him down. It's the same thing with Iowa. You know, Caitlin Clark's teammates. But they didn't. They actually had a pretty good game themselves. It just did. was what it was. They faced a better team. But... This was just UConn. I mean, here's the Purdue story. couldn't breathe. I no, mean, that defense with UConn, I haven't seen anybody play defense like that before. Well, and, and let's face it, the big story out of... The entire weekend was the ratings that Caitlin Clark brought to the, uh, yeah, brought to the game. Yeah, eighteen point seven million viewers. I'm glad you got that because I lost my picture. Yeah, okay, twelve point against LSU, twelve point three million. Yep. Against UConn, fourteen point two. Yep. And eighteen point seven against South Carolina. My question is, and some people were saying this is women's basketball has turned a corner, or is this this? The Caitlin Clark effect. Caitlin Clark effect. I think so too. If you look at the South Carolina NC State game, that had 7.1 million viewers. A big drop off. I mean, it was more, it was less than half the viewers that the Iowa game had versus UConn, which Iowa shouldn't have won, by the way. Oh, it was a foul. And plus the fact there was under six seconds left. Even if they don't call that foul, you don't know that UConn's going to score. Okay. You just don't. Okay. That wasn't a foul. It was a foul. Okay. It, it was a moving pick. It was in. She put her elbow out. It was a little Technically, flagrant. No. It, it, you don't call that late in the game. You, you don't make that call. Iowa shouldn't have been in the championship. I mean, maybe they, they would have been. I don't know. You're right. I don't know. But I mean, shouldn't have been called. That was ticky tacky. That was not ticky. You don't do that with less than a minute okay. left in the game. I saw, well, less than a minute in the game, less than 10 seconds in the game. She put her arm out there. No, she it. didn't. Yes, she, she was did. setting herself up for the pick. No. That was a very obvious foul. It was not a very obvious yes, foul. Yes, it was. Normally, a moving pick is the person's actually moving both feet. She was simply sliding into position. She was sliding into the all, Iowa Okay, player. explain me to this. Explain me this. Four of those were called on UConn. How many were called on Iowa? Yeah, none. Right. I, I'm not arguing you that. wanted to see Iowa in that game. Who's they? The Illuminati. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They wanted that to happen. I don't want to think that the refs the were... The ratings, if, if UConn would have won that game, and it was UConn, South Carolina, the ratings would have fallen off. If you look back in 2002, the ratings for that game was 4.2 million viewers, and that was UConn, South Carolina. If it was UConn, South Carolina again, it would have been the same type of ratings as before. If not less, because there was the Caitlin Clark effect. And she raised the game next year. And I hope I'm wrong. I want you to know I hope I'm wrong. I, I honestly don't care if I'm wrong or not. I'm not going to watch it, though. I watched it because of Caitlin Clark this year. And there's nothing else that makes me want to watch that game. She did something. The game she played was different than you've seen other women athletes yeah, play. She and she probably, it was like watching... For me, I put it up there was like Mar when Martina and Evertoloba played. She played a different game than the yeah. rest of the women. Yeah, there's and then Serena came along and played something that nobody's ever. And seen. I watch Serena play and Venus play all the time because I watch Serena and Venus. Right. I, I 
didn't watch anybody else play. And this happened once before, too, with Lisa Leslie. I remember watching as a kid Lisa Leslie play because she was fun to watch. So was Nancy, Nancy Lieberman back when I was right. younger. But it doesn't mean that something I, I'm going to watch the other sport because I get to see people do things that I don't get people to see in the women's sport. It, it's just a different type of game, and the men's game's more exciting. But Caitlin Clark made the women's game much more exciting. And the six foot seven girl that was there, what's her name again? I can never pronounce it. I Camila Cardoso, six foot seven. She was five inches taller than anybody else in the yeah. game. She and just shut him down. She was fun to watch too. Like there's there's exciting players to watch. And she was an athlete. And honestly, Caitlin Clark's going to be the first pick by Indiana. Yeah, for sure. I think if. And don't ask me to say her name because I will butcher it. Cardoza. Yeah, Cardoza. If she comes out, I think she's I the go, best player. They're I picking Caitlin Clark to sell tickets. I mean, Cardoza is the much better player, and it's not even close. Well, they're different kind of players. I mean, she's six foot seven. You include the hair; she's almost seven feet. I mean, she is just a big human being. She is. She is. But and she's gonna be taller than anybody else in the WNBA. But she's an athlete. Well, she's I mean, definitely she's, an athlete. She's got game. And these girls are athletes. There's nothing taken away from them, but this is definitely the Caitlin Clark effect. Everybody watched to see Caitlin Clark to see if she won a championship. If she lost against UConn, and it was UConn, South Carolina, those ratings would have been what they were in 2022, which is around the 4.2 million viewers. I think you're right. And, it, and the game on the championship game really wasn't. That I turned close. it off. Uh, when. I Three minutes it. left. I was like, this is... There was no coming back. It, it wasn't a good game to watch. I didn't want to sit there and watch Caitlin Clark try and force up shots. Caitlin wasn't playing the best. I've seen it. She played outstanding in the first quarter. There was a lot of pressure on her to win yes. that. Yeah, and she a felt it. Of, and she, she felt, felt it. it. And it's the first time I've seen her throughout this tournament really feel that pressure. Because this does affect her legacy. I don't think it's going to. If she does well in the WNBA... It, it doesn't affect the impact she had on the game. Nothing will take that away. She had more impact on the game and brought more girls to the game of basketball than any other player in history. And I think that's great. Yep. But if we're talking legacy in college basketball, it affects her legacy in the same way Larry Bird's college legacy is affected in college because he never won a championship. Was Pete Maravich's legacy affected Did by he college? win a championship? No. Then yes. He, no. He is not considered one of the greatest of all time if you don't win a championship. Period. End of story. Kareem is considered one of the best college players of all time because he won four. Three. Three. Sorry. Because he's going to play when he was a freshman. That's right. I forgot about that. You look at Bill Russell. It's the same way. Bill Russell is one of the greatest of all time because he won 11 NBA championships and three or four college championships. He is. I mean, Bill Russell, if we're talking greatest basketball players of all time, the answer should be Bill Russell. Maybe Oscar he won all those championships. Maybe Oscar. Who won more championships? Well, who had the better team? I mean, Boston was stacked during that time. Yeah, 11. Yeah. He needs to use his toes to put rings on. I mean, it's absolutely insane. But if we're talking about her legacy in college, I mean, I'm, you, you can't, like I said, the impact she had on the game. I think that's what people unmatched. are going to match. And that's what people are going to remember when they think of the championships. Would I put her as the GOAT? No, I think you have to win a but championship. this reminds me of you and all the other Brewers fans talking about the 82 team. Yeah, and Caitlin Clark is you, going to be remembered talk the same about way. them like they won a championship, and then you're like, wait, they didn't win? They would have won had Raleigh been able to pitch. Blah, blah, blah. They eat my, the 82 Brewers alone. But I'm just saying it's the same yeah. type of concept. People talk about the 82 Brewers like they won something because it's what I they know, have. But, but then you find out they okay. didn't win the championship okay. and that they're terrible. Caitlin Clark will be remembered. She South will. Carolina, time. South Carolina will be forgotten. South Carolina just won two championships in I, three years. They did. That and they, is one of the greatest yes, college basketball teams of lost, all time. They lost one game in two years. Correct. Caitlin Clark will be remembered more than One that. One game team. in I think two and a half years. Because they want to run in the champion in the tournament in 2022. They will be remembered as one of the greatest teams sure. of all time. Caitlin Clark will outlast. Yes. You're absolutely right. Caitlin Clark will outlast the South Carolina legend. But if you have to talk about greatest of all time, 
I, I just, I truly believe you have to win a championship for that. To I'm happen. not arguing that. Look at but Charles I'm... Barkley. Charles Barkley's never considered one of the greatest of all time. Had he beaten the Bulls in '94, that's a different conversation. He might be remembered. He's remembered as one of the top fifty. One of. One of. One of. Not the. And I'm. He can never be in the that. conversation for the. It's the same thing with tennis. If you don't win on all four surfaces, you can't be considered one of the greatest of all time. Not He's arguing can. that. Rod Laver. Would not be in that conversation. He did not win on all four surfaces. It's because they didn't have those four surfaces care. at the time. Did That's he win not on all fair. four surfaces? Yes, but nope. he didn't. Nope. Did he win on all four surfaces? No, because they did only Did he ever win on clay? Yes. Did he ever win on hard court? They didn't have hard court did at the time. Did he ever win on the hybrid court in Australia? He won other tournaments. So no. That, but they didn't have that when he played. Yeah. He could so, only. That's like, that's like saying, well, <laughs> you know, you have this run. But look at who you played against. You can only play against what you've got, and you can only play on the surfaces that you have available. Yeah, it's the same thing with the Ty Cobb argument. He played a different game, so it doesn't count in today's sports. Yes, it does. It doesn't. Although, this is one thing that came out. Josh Gibson, if they would have counted his records, yes, would have finished his career with a 374 batting average, which beats Ty Cobb's, and plus he... Might Same have hit, argument with Babe Ruth. He might never, have hit he didn't play against the best players of all time. So who knows what he would have done he in did. baseball? He didn't. You, th- he did. That argument is used against Babe Ruth all the time, I by know. the way. And so it's only fair to use that argument back. Uh, sure, against Josh Gibson. Josh yeah. Gibson should have been in Major League Baseball, and they both oh, should have played against. However, the best they, they still would have been great. They st- of course, they would. And, and they, honestly, and Josh they Gibson did. still would have hit three fifty. They did. Play against each other they in did. barnstorming. And Josh Gibson lit him up. And Je- my favorite stat: Josh Gibson. They always call the black Babe Ruth or Babe Ruth the white Josh Gibson. Correct. Or it's Yankee. just job get Josh Gibson, and then there's Babe He's, Ruth. Yankee Stadium was called the house that Ruth built. Yes. And Josh Gibson, though, was the guy who hit the furthest ball ever in Yankee Stadium. Some say it went out. Satchel Paige says it went out of the stadium. Other people said it hit the facade on the upper deck in left field. Okay. That's over 500 feet. Either way, he hit that thing a long way. Country mile, as they say. <laughs> Josh Gibson was an outstanding player. I would have loved Caitlin Clark is an outstanding yes. player. But how many rings she got? Zero. And Zero. until that ring appears, it, it, She's gonna it, have, just, it, it doesn't count. I mean, it counts. I shouldn't say that. But she can't be considered the greatest of all time. I, I just... You hold that against everybody I do. else. I'm not, I am not saying Caitlin Clark is the greatest woman's player of all time. I'm not because she hasn't won it. She's the most exciting, most she's, impactful. She is the pistol Pete of women's sports mm-hmm. and women's basketball. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, she can do things that no, I've never seen done. She drives a lane and passes. She can't shoot from the right. Yeah, she's got to learn to shoot moving to the right. But impact wise, Iowa 22 will be hung in the rafters tonight. There will be. Like, the fact that they haven't done it already, yeah, I think be is a stat- joke. A statue is being bronzed right As now. As it should. And she should be in the College Basketball Hall of Fame. And she should be known as one of the greatest. I'm just saying that championship loss hurts her legacy. you got to have the ring to be considered the greatest of all like, time. Like, because the greatest of all time are champions. Like Dan Marino, she didn't yeah. have the rest of the team around her. She could only do so much. Yeah, Marino got there, didn't he? And he lost. Yeah, they both got to the championship game. They and lost. They lost. Dan yeah, Marino got there once. Yeah, they never really gave him any receivers or running game. Never had a running game. Yeah. Anyways, we digress. We digress. You and I have had a great show, but as you all know, you cannot have a conversation with your dad without your father getting the last word. So it is all you. So I am going to congratulate a sports organization, the NAIA which oversees about 83,000 intercollegiate athletic athletes did the right thing. They unanimously, this wasn't even a debate. They unanimously banned transgendered athletes from competing against women. And make no mistake, this is keeping men out of women's sports. I've talked about it on here several times, but this is something that the NCAA and every state's sports association should copy this policy cut and paste it into theirs and make it done this is about biology this is not about anything to do with sports it's virtue signaling men should not be competing against women let's protect 
women's integrity and their dignity because they're allowing these athletes who claim to be female, even though they're biologically male, to actually shower with the women. I don't want guys showering with my daughters. It should never happen. And we as a society should go, no, we'll set up a separate category so you can have transgendered versus transgendered. Sadly, a lot of these athletes couldn't cut it against the men, so they go and compete against the women. And I don't know what satisfaction they get out of it. They're not beating their peers. They're dropping down a grade because young men are bigger, stronger, faster. It's why Serena Williams famously said, I wouldn't beat the top 200 players in the men's game for that very reason. So I, I applaud the NAIA for doing the right thing. Let's protect women's sports. Title IX was a hard fought win and we should protect not only the athletes from getting hurt, but the integrity of that game by keeping men out of women's sports. Way to go, NA NAIA. It's a weird two clap at the end there. I hit the microphone. Got it. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. This has been Sports Talk with Dad. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.